I got to take some of the power out of him the same way I did with Fulio Bell because you never know what these guys got in store for you. He's a hell of a fighter. He's a dangerous puncher. So you can't take chances did in it, there. Did at any time did you feel a sense of his power? Sure. I got caught with a good shot, I think, maybe in the first or second round, maybe. But uh, then after that, I figured that was his best shot. And I was more or less voiding him to, for him to come and do some more of them. So I know if he can hit me, I can sure enough hit him. First, I'd like to thank God, really, for giving me the courage and uh, for carrying me all the way up to the top. He gave me the, the inspiration and the dedication and everything to, what to keeps keep this you, drive going. What keeps you so ambitious after having achieved your ambition of being a champion? I believe that I want to prove to the world that I am one of the greatest. I think Monzon was the last great middleweight champion. And when I'm done with this game, I would like to go down in history as the same way. Thank you very much, Now Martin. I'm getting ready for Animal. Frank Fletcher, because I'm the monster. He's the animal, but I'm the monster. But you've always had problems with Philadelphia fighters, and he's a Philadelphia fighter. Well, you know, the same no, thing with the British. Sign. Now maybe they're sticking him on me, so now what I got to do is destroy Philly. But, uh, you know, I know they're going to get him ready in every kind of way, the same way they did to Tony Simpson. But uh, I took my part in every kind of way I could. Thank you very much, Marvin. My Congratulations. I'd like to say thanks for HBO for giving me the biggest credit of my life for following me and giving me my biggest opportunities. I should like to add this as a parting word to our viewers, which is that in some quarters, I suppose, this fight will be viewed as a mismatch. We've heard that no, term thrown around. That. We've heard that term <laughs> turned around, Marvin. But if you, you eliminated no all mismatches, then Marvin Hagler would have nobody to fight. Oh. And Sugar Ray Robinson would have had about 12, want, 12 right fights now. in his life instead of 200. There's, we want the animal to come up with the money. That's all we want. Somebody once said that the whole world is a mismatch, and certainly in this ring, anybody who fights Marvin Hagler, it is a mismatch. Back to ringside. Okay, thank you very much, Larry Merchant and the champion, still the champion, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Just to echo some of those thoughts that Larry and Marvin were just talking about, the fact that people keep saying that it's just another guy and he's really not the caliber of competition that Marvin Hagler should have. Well, if he isn't, Tony Simpson, then who is? That was a very tough kid he fought tonight. That only takes one word to describe Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Awesome. I don't think there's any question about that. We walked by Steve Wainwright, the lawyer in Marvin Hagler's camp, just coming down here to do this portion of the show, and he said he's learned how to box, hasn't he? Well, I tell you, I thought he could box before. Well, I knew Hagler. See, Hagler is a versatile fighter. I mean, he can change up at any given moment. He can box, punch, slug. He has all the qualifications for a champion, as he is. The thing is, of course, where does he go from here? He gets the animal, Fletcher, next. Now people will say, well, he's going to be his toughest opponent. They were saying Tony Simpson was going to be his toughest opponent before this one. Well, Animal Fletcher is a tough guy. I mean, real tough, top contender, worthy challenger for the middleweight crown. And uh, I'm quite sure he's watching. He wants Hagler. It's going to be a good fight. All right. Well, you saw the middleweight championship tonight. You're going to be seeing an awful lot more here on HBO. We are going to have the unification. But we had a good one tonight, too. You know, people keep saying, as we said, that it's just another face. You know, well, Tony Simpson was another face tonight, and he was vanquished just like everybody else. At some point, you have to look at Marvin Hagler and say, this guy is the champion. This guy is number one. This guy may be in the top five of the best middleweights ever. Oh, I would agree. I would support that uh, fact that he's in the top five. In fact, I get to appreciate the artistry, the determination, and desire to win at all times. Larry Merchant, this is the time that we talk about closing comments and kind of try to put a period or an exclamation point to a fight. And I rather think that Marvin Hagler did that all by his lonesome tonight. Yes, and appropriately, because I think he's coming to that point near where Ray Leonard was, which is that we all just like to watch a consummate professional work uh, to raise his craft almost to an art. Uh, I've been thinking watching this that there are parts of 10 colleges in this little town and if they turn out any graduates that have his skill, determination, artistry, uh, they'll be doing a good job. He's a great athlete. The catch-all question, of course, where do you put him in the great scheme of the middleweights down the line? Well, that remains to be seen. He's, if he's indeed 28 years old, he's got a lot of years ahead of him. But I think he is the best middleweight champion since Monzon. Uh, where he gets in the uh, into the, the starlight remains. Uh, it's a little early, but we don't see anybody out there right now who can uh, give him serious problems. Uh, perhaps Hearns and perhaps Benitez 
at the end of this year or early next year? Ray Leonard, it's going to be obvious that people are going to start talking now. If Marvin Hagler is really that good, he's got to fight Sugar Ray Leonard. Your response to it, you're going to be asked it, obviously, a thousand times. Well, I'm with HBO. I'm history. Right? As far as boxing is concerned, I'm history. You know what I mean? Marvin Hagler still thinks, he says, Ray Leonard's going to watch me fight a few times and come back this summer. No, well, to reiterate on what Larry said, I mean, guys like Tommy Hearns and Wilfred Benitez, those guys he can fondle with. I mean, really. Those are the guys, of course, that Marvin Hagler has in the offing right now. It's been said that Marvin Hagler is the main event in an arena of faceless challengers. Whether or not that is true, he has handled every one of those people faceless or with a face. He has taken care of everybody that's come down the line. There's no question Marvin Hagler is number one. He must be considered amongst the top middleweights in history. So for Sugar Ray Leonard and Larry Merchant, I'm Barry Tompkins. We'll see you on March 18th at HBO from Atlantic City and the unification fight for the light heavyweight championship. Be sure to tune in Friday, March 18th for that unification fight. WBC champion Dwight Braxton battling WBA champion Michael Spinks. It could be the fight of the year. It'll be live 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, and 8 o'clock Pacific time right here on HBO. So, for Larry Merchant and Sugar Ray Leonard, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long for the Centrum in Worcester, Massachusetts, where once again marvelous Marvin Hagler has defeated Tony Simpson with 2 minutes and 40 seconds gone in the sixth round. This show was produced by Ross Greenberg and directed by Mark Payton. The associate producers are Rick Bernstein and Linda Jackson.